What's up guys? It is Wednesday and it is prime time for the door bottoms on the Duramax. Uh, and that cup of there, we got some epoxy. It's not the Matrix brand, that is Montana brand uh, right there. And this is a dual purpose primer and or sealer. Um, we're going to use that first. I'm not a big fan of the rattle can etch, so I'm going to go with that. And they didn't have any uh, Matrix at the supply store, and I ain't got that kind of time. So here's what we got. Um, everything's masked up here. Uh, you can see I don't have that bagged up at the top, which is not a problem. I'm going to spray this at such low pressure that we shouldn't have any issues. Done it before. So that's kind of what we got. A little tight on my mask down there, but uh, I think we'll be okay. And the same thing on the other side here. We are ready to go. And I'll throw a little dab over that uh, spot up high there, and some over that right there, and then those will get some high build after so we're going to get the gun set up and ready to go here I'm going to use this guy right here my little Vilbus touch up gun I hate like hell to put sealer through that thing but uh, I really don't have a choice I need something small and to not be wasteful because that or I'm sorry not sealer uh, epoxy um, find my tripod here I don't like to put anything but uh, base or clear through that gun, but it is what it is. I, I can't help it today. I could adjust the bigger gun down, but that means cleaning a big gun up, and I don't want to do that either. Alrighty. checking it before I go and uh, get ready to spray make sure everything's uh, what it's supposed to be okay get a strainer get a mask If you guys have ever used these little touch-up guns with those strainers, you can't just set it in the gun or the shit will run all down the side of it. Alright, so you kind of got to hold it up. As you're pouring, this one came with, I don't know where it's at, it came with this ridiculous ass thing. Why do I want to have to clean this piece of shit up when I can just pick the strainer up so it doesn't make a mess? fail. I don't need that. I kept it. It'd be good for something. The glove up here. And this is a one-to-one -one mix and it is a... Uh, oop, almost lost it there. You can read that right there, non-induction. So there's no induction time on this particular epoxy. Some epoxies have an induction time of 30 minutes or something like that. This one has zero. Um, I've been using it for a while. I don't know that it's the greatest stuff since sliced bread, but uh, it seems to do the job. So. So we'll take you guys out to the shop here. And uh, sit you down for a second and grab a tack rag. I'm going to do the outside. 
sides of the doors first. Make sure I take that back. I think we're going to do the insides of the doors first. And uh, let's set this tech rig right down for a second. I've got to go grab my airline. Make sure this thing's frayed. Stand by, guys. Let's start another clip. I just heard somebody pull in, and I can't start this with somebody here. Okay, crisis averted. Here we go.
right guys I am going to uh, put a second coat on the outside of that in about 15 minutes and that'll be that All right, well, I'll turn you back on when I'm ready to put some high build on there. We're already at 10 minutes, so later. All right, guys, I got some 2K primer on that truck, but uh, not without fail. Um, I went ahead and put three coats on it and I let the last coat flash off quite a bit and I got it about 80 degrees here in the shop. That primer started to kick in my cup a little bit. So I got all my uh, goodies in there and I uh, got that so that the thinner will come up through it. Gun body's clean. There was a little bit of crap in the tip. That lightning uh, primer is some bad stuff. Works good though. Just got to be a little mindful of uh, your pot life on that. Uh, but the one thing I had happen, I forgot to tape down or tuck that paper back there. And of course it, you know, rookie mistake there. It blew up into my paper. But uh, we're going to block this out in the morning. Um, I've got it 80 degrees in here right now. And it'll stay that way for a good couple hours. So this will kick off and uh, we'll come and hit it in the morning and see what it turns out like but uh, I think I'm going to be pretty happy with it I know for a fact that that corner is uh, not going to make it I'm going to have to reprime on that but no big deal because I have something else I can start on tomorrow but the rest of them I think turned out good we'll see what happens when we put the block to it but uh, my header panel for the bed should be here this afternoon and I'm going to get on this and uh, go ahead and uh, get this welded in. So um, I believe the only spot welds that need to come off are these ones down the side here and along the bottom. The top ones are part of this panel which comes with the new header panel. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see, two, two four six eight ten on that side and I'm sure there's ten on the other so that's twenty uh, I probably got thirty five spot welds or forty spot welds to drill so I'm gonna give that a go and get that done um, but here's the other side it's kinda dark over here because I got my portable work light on the other side but that should be okay I'm pretty sure let's take a gander down this side that body work hid real nice and uh, I think the inside will be good too. I got three coats on most of it. And uh, if it isn't perfect inside, that's not the end of the world. I wanted to have it rust protected and uh, be as close to a factory look as possible. But I think I got it. it that the primer filled 85% of those pits. Um, there's just a tiny little thing you can probably, if the camera will focus, I don't know if it will. There's a couple little ones right there and a couple little ones right there, but again, no big deal. As long as uh, it's protected, I'm happy. But the outside we want to make nice, nice. You yeah, don't want to do that. I know it's dry to the touch, but uh, uh, and the way I sprayed this primer, I started my furthest distance that I was going to prime and then worked my way in toward the repair that's the way that they suggest um, some people do it the other way and just keep building it out farther and farther I've done it that way too um, but I've actually run into problems in the past with that where it rings the repair especially when you got a spot like in the middle of a panel um, these I'm priming such a large continuous area uh, my step back in the primer was actually back into the work instead of uh, going out away from the work so 
we'll block that out tomorrow and see what we got. Till then, guys, have a good one, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Later. All right, guys, it's still Wednesday, and uh, I figured I'd hang out and keep the shop warm for a couple more hours while I'm waiting for that primer to uh, start drying off. So I decided to uh, take my header panel off the bed. And there it is on the wall. All spot welds are drilled. But uh, here's an interesting uh, scenario. This truck has had a spray-in bed liner since day one. I basically took it after I got it and got the bed liner put in it. Don't think that uh, the floor of your bed won't rust out because you have a bed liner and it's not getting scratched up. Um, I'm guessing what happened here is we got water that laid underneath it and uh, probably uh, over here where it was rotten worse um, just started the corrosion process. Now this is shiny over here but what I was doing I was grabbing this stuff from the edge and peeling it up and that's corrosion and it's probably the whole floor of the bed but I'm not going to sweat it because it's still solid um, I'm going to fix this one little section in the corner here and grind the bed liner back on it so that it's sort of feathered back and uh, when I put the new header panel in I'll blend some uh, Raptor liner up to it I don't care that it's not the same stuff this is the real rubbery stuff um, but yeah, so I'll get that patched up uh, before I put the header back in. And uh, i got to make a PCs part for the cross member here too. Um, that lip is missing in this area here. So I will probably bend some sheet metal and uh, put a lip across the front of that all the way to where it starts to firm back up over in this area. Right about the middle of the bed is where it's uh, pretty solid. So that's that the cross member actually isn't bad it's scaly as hell but it's not bad so this actually may be part of that cross member I'm not sure I can't tell I beat some of that down um, but uh, even this is you know half ass firm over here um, so yeah I'm gonna be patching that corner the gift that keeps on giving alright guys I just figured I'd show you that little tidbit I'm gonna get back to it here and uh, get this uploaded for you